In this video, I will show you how to use the effects on Slideshow 11. You will learn how they work and from there on you will get creative yourself. Hi, I'm Nadine from Aquasoft. I'm glad you're watching this video because there's so much you can learn. Let's start right away with the first effect. The first effect I want to show you is the gallery effect. It's fairly easy to use and I think it's perfect for a preview when you're starting a new chapter. I've already made a gallery with the gallery effect. I'm just closing this chapter here. And then I'll drag the gallery effect from the toolbox into the timeline. Now we can add our photos. I want to add six photos, three in the first row and another three in the second row. I drag my photos into the effect in the timeline. Now it's important to place the images under each other. We want to show them all at the same time, so the objects have to be at the same place in the timeline. Now that we have the images in place, let's move to the properties panel and here we can choose how many rows we are going to need. If I select two columns, there will be three images in each row. Now I select four scrubbing and it's much nicer this way. And there you have it, that's the whole of it. Now it's time to get creative and play around with this effect. You could put the effect into a flexi collage object, add a transition or you could add image effects to your photos. And I will do just that. I will first select all images, then change the fade in to none. And now I go to objects in the toolbox, drag a flexi collage into the timeline, and then I'll drag my gallery effect into the flexi collage. So I can give the whole effect a fade in, not every single image. Now I go again into the gallery and let's see what are we going to do to these images. I think we could choose some image effects. Let's say we want to change the colors to black and white. I'm sure you will come up with much more ideas how to use this effect. Now on to the next effect. It's the picture in picture effect. It looks like this. This is another effect that is fairly easy to use, but I think most people in our community wouldn't want to miss it. Sometimes the aspect ratio of your project doesn't quite fit the aspect ratio of your photos. And, and that's totally okay. The only thing you want to avoid are black frames or previous images peeking up from behind. So again, I'll show you how to use this effect. You will find the picture in picture effect in the toolbox at the object effect. Just drag it into the timeline and then you're selecting an image. And you see it doesn't fit the frame, but if I select the effect, you will see that the effect added a blurry background and you can change the blur, the blurriness, you can even change the zoom strength or you can add a color effect. I won't do the color effect, but I will show you how it looks with the zoom and the blur. So you see, I did this effect in no time at all and you can use it in your slideshow as well. On to the next effect. Here I want to show you some transitions. You would think that transitions are pretty basic, and of course they can be. In Slideshow 11 you have a ton of options to alter them, and you can save your changes. That makes it easier for you to customize the transitions. And here's an idea for your next project. What I did here, I will zoom into the timeline and you can see. This is the first image. I desaturated the colors, and then there's the second image, and both images come with a transition. It's the same actually, turn out page. And you can see the second image has a slight zoom in effect. I will rebuild this effect with you now. I go to objects, select a chapter, then I need an image. Let's select this one. Now I'm just fitting the image to the frame. 
and then I press Ctrl and drag the first image into a new track. Now I've selected the two images and I will just choose a nice fade in. Maybe this one here, grow. And now I will just desaturate the first image. I go to image effects and then I go to retro and choose the bleach bypass effect. And for the second image, I will add a slight zoom. But the zoom should start at two seconds. And then I'll add another movement mark and move the camera to the face. Let's see how it looks. Now let's have a look at the next effect. It's the mask effect. I will just start the preview for you. With a mask effect you are able to control which parts of an image are hidden and which parts are shown. And the same goes for videos. The mask you're using can be an image or even a video. The mask can be still or it can move around, showing different parts of the image that is contained in it. The effects I showed you before were so easy to handle you didn't really need to make any effort. But I'm showing you this effect although you need to take some trial and error to fully understand how it works. But I promise when you've managed to control it, there's so much you can do with it. Let's have a look at this example here. You only see this image of the leaves where there are letters. And the letters are in fact the mask. In order to let an image through the mask effect, the mask has to be white. That's why the letters in the mask are white, like you can see here. But then in the final picture, we see them filled with the photo in the background. There is another example, this one here. We have a photo and we have this heart shape. That's our photo and that's the heart shape. We can only see this other photo where the heart moves. See, it has a movement path. And when it finally grows bigger, we can see more of the image. Let's have a look at it. So now we are going to create our own mask. I just go to Objects and choose a chapter. Now I need a background and I need an image for the mask effect. I will just adjust the aspect ratio of the background. And here's my image. This image is the one I want to mask. Now I go to Objects and select the mask effect from the live effects and drag it onto my image. And now I need a mask. I will choose a heart and drag it into the mask section. And now I can see where I can, where the mask has to be placed in order to see a part of the image. I place it like this. And now let's have a look. You see only the part of my image that has this mask. The last effect I want to show you is another easy one. Here's the preview. It's the image strip effect. And for this you only need the image strip effect itself from the toolbox. You find it under object effects. Just drag it into the timeline and then we can drag our images into the timeline. And that's it. That's the image strip effect. All you have to do is just drag your photos into the effect. In this effect it's important that the images should just be placed next to each other in the same trick. Don't layer them as it would disturb the mechanism behind the image strip effect. And in the properties panel, you can choose in which direction the images should move and how far apart they should be placed. And you can also crop them to make them fit the screen. These were just five effects that you can use in Aquasoft Slideshow. And some of them are also available on Aquasoft Spot On. I would encourage you to try them for yourselves. You will see how the time flies when you do things like that with your photos and videos. And don't forget to comment below and give this video a thumbs up. Until the next video, bye!